Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Lauren Bailey, who is the founder and CEO of Factor 8, a sales training company. But today... We want to talk about something else. I, I had the pleasure of watching Lauren speak uh, a couple of weeks ago at the at the Women's Sales Pro event about her new passion project, um, which is called Girls Club. And let's face it, we have enough boys clubs, so it's about time we had a girls club, right? I love it. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Yeah. But I love that a boy's interviewing me about it. Thank yes, you. Yes, exactly. There you go. Um, so, so, Lauren, tell me a little bit about, because we talked before about what you do with sales training and all of that. So, but tell me a little bit about why you decided to set up this organization called Girls Club. Um, I am really bad at giving Pat marketing approved answers. So I'm just going to give no. you the honest between the eyes because I was sick to death of people talking about it and not Mm -hmm. doing anything right like year after year Lauren will you host another round table on why there weren't more women in sales management Mm -hmm. and I get it like I didn't grow up seeing any other women leading sales groups I didn't have any role models and I was fine with that I really was like Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up all angry about this I never beat this drum in the past I really didn't and and maybe I should have because once I started to look around and see wow I, I really didn't have any role models. There's something wrong with that. And mm-hmm. year after year of having the same discussions of why don't we and how do we solve it? I thought, you know what? I think I can fix it. Or I can at least take steps in the right direction mm-hmm. of fixing it. I have this theory. Let's see if it works. So why do you think it is that there are so few women in sales management positions? Because, you know, when when I when you gave your speech, like I thought back over the years, different companies I'd worked for, and I was saying, yeah, that's true. I mean, I was fortunate in one of the companies I ran, I had uh, two great um, women who ran, you know, who were, who were sales managers, for sales VPs who ran whole areas. But when I was thinking back and thinking at other companies I've been to, I was thinking, yeah, there there isn't that many, and, and I don't understand why. I um, I have theories, right? There are people who are smarter than the two of us. Let's be honest, out there that do lot, research on well, this, right? On my side, there's a lot of people, like that, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lori Richardson recently did a great study on this, and I can't even quote the numbers from that. So we're going to talk like why we really think it is, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll give you my opinion. You give me yours. Um, I think it has to do with risk taking. And, uh, and to, to give an example of that, I'll tell a story. So two weeks ago, my head of marketing came to Phoenix, and we spent like three days together, whiteboarding, therapy, wine, the whole nine yards. It was great. Uh, Because we all work remotely, right? This is my home office. Mm. She works out of her home office. And she's new to marketing. She's been doing it for just a year. And so we were like really honest about what's working, what's not working, et cetera. And at the end, she got herself a fantastic raise. And we looked and saw like, guess what? It's actually working, right? We'd never spent any money on marketing before. Mm. And, And the question was, did, did it do what it was supposed to do? Did we make any actual revenue off marketing? And we pulled the report and sure as heck, our biggest client came in as a web lead. Right. So she was like feeling 10 feet tall, right? She got a big ass raise. And at the end, I said, well, you know, what's interesting, Chandra, is we don't have any sales or revenue KPIs right now in your comp plan. Mm-hmm. And, and that's because we were just lazy and set it up sure. quickly sure. and, you know, do what we say, not what we mm-hmm. do. Because I think everybody in marketing and in training should also have sales KPIs. Sure. And, and I said, right, so you're walking away with the 10% raise. What if we said you could earn 15 to 25% based on KPIs? Because if you had done that this year, think of what you would have mm. earned, right? And she said, no, that scares the crap out of me. And I thought, well, isn't that fascinating? Because we just talked about what you would have earned had you done it for the last year. Right. Like it's already in the past. It's in the books. You would have earned more. And you would still say no, because I wasn't saying, do you want to do it next year? I was saying, Shandra, do you want to do it this year? Uh. Do you want to do it retroactively? Do you want me to write you a bigger check right now? (laughs) Right. And she was like, "Mm, at risk money. I'm not sure about that. So I think that could have something to play there. And so why do you think it is then that, uh, because I mean, if you're going to be in sales management, you're you're probably already in sales, right? I think that's <laughs> I very, very true. I, so, th- I do. It, so you're it enough, was a true right? So you're enough. You're enough of a risk taker to be in sales in the first place. Why do you think um, more women don't take the next the leap into the ah, management position? Yeah, 
Yeah. So my answer was why there aren't more women in sales, mm-hmm. which is absolutely problem one, right? right. I mm-hmm. think that I did see a stat last week that said 39% of the of the sales workforce are women. Right. So that is definitely less than the 51% of the population, right? Sure, sure. Um, it, and that's the risk taking. So why don't they raise their hand? This one I can quote a stat on. They did a study by HP a few years ago. And I love this one. This is, I think, probably what really was my tipping point to say, I want to fix this, Mm -hmm. that if there's a job that's posted out there, right, and it says you need to, you know, do these 10 things and leap buildings in a single bound, a man will apply when he can do about six of those 10 things. He's like, nailed it. They'll be lucky to have me, (laughs) right? And a woman waits until they have 100% Mm. before they raise their hand. And I, I was talking about that with a group of women and women sales pros, and they were talking about how Little boys are kind of raised as risk takers and adventurers, and little girls are kind of raised as perfectionists. Ah, That's an interesting, that's an interesting theory. And if that's the case, right, the HP study really does demonstrate that. We don't raise our hand until we know it's a sure thing. And that that is an interesting theory because I know I mean I've applied for jobs when I barely qualify on one of the things on the ten. Yeah. list. So. <laughs> I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Um, I I've done it at I would say about eighty mm-hmm. percent. About eighty percent. But here's the thing: that's that was the far that was the spark for me, John, because when I I heard that I was like, oh, I can fix that. I train frontline sales managers. I think we do that better than anybody. Mm. <laughs> Slightly biased, <laughs> right? And so we were putting, we're putting our, on, our management curriculum, our management training online. And I was like, this is a low barrier to entry. Mm-hmm. There's a low cost to entry. And I was speaking at a conference in Chicago. It was about 700 people. And I was like, everybody here can have a free seat. I mean, my real out-of-pocket cost is maybe 20 bucks right. a person, mm-hmm. right? Even if 100 people take me up on it, let's do it. Yeah, Let's uh, go for it. I'll, I'll fund that. Absolutely, That's awesome, right? but it, but and it's a, it's a it's a very it's a very interesting it's a very interesting theory be of, of that uh, perfectionism perfectionism versus you know risk taking or whatever um, because I always I have a theory on perfectionism anyway is that I but, think that um, people hide behind perfectionism because if you're a perfectionist perfection is unachievable right. So okay, you right. can't you can't achieve perfection. Therefore, if you're a perfectionist, it is a great way of never doing anything, right? Because you always have that fallback position, like oh, it's not a hundred percent. I can't I can't move forward, right? It's so, a lot like that fixed mindset, growth mm-hmm. mindset, yeah. Right? Like mm-hmm. a perfectionist is I I do it or I don't. Yes, I'm yeah. good or I'm not. Mm-hmm. Versus the growth mindset saying, yeah, I really effed yeah. that up, but guess what? I'm going to get better each time. Yeah. So how do you? So how do you help uh, um, women or anybody? I mean, because that's it may apply to both, but particularly focus on women. So how do you? Um, how are you going to help women to break through that and say, you know, something? When I look at everybody else who's going to apply for this management job, you know, something. I bet you most of those have fifty percent or less of the qualification. I'm just as yeah. good. I'm not just as good, but I'm better than most of them. I Oh, I really hope so. So this has been the fun part. So when we first started, like I said, we were going to do training. That's one way to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, do you know how to do a sales manager? You were trained to do it. Like, come on, I think you meet the criteria, right? Like, and you might not still have years of or whatever, but in your company, we've trained you to do the job. And I bet most of the current managers haven't been. Mm -hmm. So let's build some confidence in applying there. But I think we could do better than that. And that's how the program grew. So a little bit of scope creep. And Mm -hmm. this is the fun stuff. We got a mentor for everybody in the group. And the idea of the mentors is to look at other women who took a risk, who raised their hand. It's to have a role model. Right. So that's one way I think we do it. So there's training and there's role models and then there's role modeling risk taking. Mm. And how do we do that? And so there's there's a thing that we're going to do called rise up on record. And this is where the mentors, the mentors have about 10 years of experience, are asked to record a little video like this and tell a story about something they've learned. The growth mindset again. But we want you to do that. Not in this perfect. Here's how great I am. And I nailed it first time out. Like, I want to know something you really screwed up, right? I want to know something you tried and failed at, you kept trying at, you learned the hard way, a risk you took, whatever. Those are the criteria of the different things that they can record. And so at their fingertips, participants will have like, I don't know, 50 videos to go in and watch these little clips of screwed that up. Yep, screwed that up. Oh, tried that, didn't. 
And I think we need to see that. And then there's one other way we're going to do it, and it's role modeling authenticity as, I think, an antidote for perfectionism, right? right. Yeah. And, and so the way we'll do that is we've got some really kick-ass women involved as thought leaders. So we sit down the EVP of sales for Panasonic, the GM at IBM, right? The SVP at Ring Central. And we're going to do interviews with these women that are like part keynote, part Oprah interview where we ask real questions with the mentors. Right. But um, it's not going to be like this. It's going to be like sit on your couch mm -hmm. and have a glass of wine and <laughs> eat some popcorn and just wear what you wear in the evenings. Like I want them to see that Judy Buckholz, GM at IBM, wears a T-shirt with a hole in it when she's on her couch at night. Right. And that because I don't think we see enough high powered women in our own workplaces. And, and the ones you do see on TV have like they're a size two with a hair and makeup wardrobe budget that is, you know, more than I make in a year. Yeah. So so I, and I think that's a that's a fascinating point that you just raised there. Right. Because I think if you put a hundred men in a line of all shapes and sizes yeah. and all yeah. of that and said to somebody and said, these are a hundred sales managers or sales executives, nobody, people yeah. go, mm, OK, but probably not the same, right? What you're saying Isn't is that people, weird? people have an idea of, well, she must be spectacular to be in that position because it's normally a boys club, right? Whereas It's very true. Mm -hmm. It's very true. And, and to be honest with you, I think that there's this other layer of judgment on women, right? I mean, that's just the media. Right. Like if, if I'm going to be a really successful um, media happy woman, then I need to look good. I mean, John, when you said we're recording this, I'm like, oh, crap, I didn't do my hair and makeup. I mean, I talked about it for five straight minutes. Did you? No. Right. So it's like yeah. this other layer of pressure. Yeah. Um, and, and some of the girls who have signed up have already started talking to me about funny little girl stuff in sales. And here's an example for you. Um, as a sales leader in a sales dominated company, I got a chance to go on two president's club trips, mm. which is awesome. Right. I yeah, went to yeah. Tahiti. It was oh, amazing. That, that's a but good guess trip. what? That did not suck, right? <laughs> um, wearing a swimsuit in front of 100 men that you work uh, with yeah. sucks for women, yeah, right? Yeah. I don't think a single guy on that trip thought about it once. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was th a whole different experience. Yeah, th those those are really interesting uh, considerations. I mean, I think that people overlook. So how would you, how would you sell the idea to w more women to actually go for being sales managers? Why is even being a sales manager, sales executive, something that somebody should aspire to? Um, I think that it, it, it's a really great question. And um, I, I wrote an article about this for a group a year or so ago. And uh, one of the reasons I think sales in itself is a fantastic position or, or uh, what am I trying to say, industry, mm -hmm. right, profession, is the flexibility and the earning potential. Right. Which is fantastic mm -hmm. for women. And by the way, more companies need to hire working moms, especially sure. inside sales. A working mom can get more done in school hours mm -hmm. than most people can get done in a week, yeah. right? Like activate that workforce. Anyway, why into management? Um, I don't know that it is a great place to be. In fact, that'll be the first lesson we talk about is why is it you really want to get into management? Mm -hmm. Because I think so many folks get in it for the wrong reason. Yeah. Like unless you're in it because you really love developing people, mm -hmm. uh, your first year, you're probably going to make less money. <laughs> And like the huge stress goes up and, and there's this thing that happens in almost everybody's first year of management, if they're really honest with themselves. And the thing that happens is a massive disappointment. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I care about this 10 times more than anyone on my team. Yeah. Welcome yeah, to management. Exactly. Well, I've, and it's I've always, yeah, I've always thought Lauren that, uh, one of the disqualifiers for anybody becoming a manager should be somebody who says they want to manage people. That should disqualify you immediately <laughs> because it means you have no idea what you're getting into. <laughs> you, right? you don't know that's going to suck yet. And it will. But, but the people who are passionate about it yeah. and really do love developing people mm -hmm. make amazing managers. Right. And I will tell you that I see more women in that like kind of nurturing role mm -hmm. than I, I've seen plenty of men who are amazing at that. Right. right. But if you look at just mass generalizations and stereotypes sure. aside, we're nurturers more mm -hmm. often, right? Now, I clearly wasn't. I had no problem getting people <laughs> hitting their numbers, but that's different. So 
Uh, why should they go for it? They should go for it if they want to, is, is all my point is. Right. When I said, here's some free training, anybody wanting into management, I had 200 signups in almost a week. Right. Our, our first social media post was like 20,000. Wow. They want it. So we I want it. Yeah, I go, go back to something that you mentioned earlier about the whole idea of authenticity, because I really do think that that's a that's going to become more and more of an important you know currency in organizations, because I think I think we're we're going through an evolution where people are kind of sick of of everything being fake or or being yeah. or just you know people putting on a face or whatever so i think that whole authenticity and real empathy and that stuff is really important and um again this is something that there's a lot of women out there that can role model for all of us very well john i love that you way you said that the currency i couldn't agree more and and i'll add another word to that another two dollar word i love a lot it's the veneer mm -hmm. like there's this veneer that happens in so, I mean, in almost everywhere in the world. And I think for as much time as we spend bitching about millennials, we can thank them for this, right. right? The millennials are very much what you see is what you get. And I don't really salute that perfect, polished, whatever. I like the viral video of the kid falling down better. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I think that that's helping more people feel like it's okay to be themselves and be true to themselves and have a messy office in the background and <laughs> Yeah. yeah, chuffed up lipstick. <laughs> I love it. So, um, so Lauren, tell me a little bit about um, how people can learn more about Girls Club and get involved in it. Yeah, thank you. We are just getting up our new URL right now, but for now it's sitting on the Factor 8 page. So next year when we talk about this, I'll be talking about the 75 is my goal, women that we get promoted oh, wow. in, in a year. And I'll be giving the Girls Club URL and all that information. And I'll be thanking our amazing sponsors. <laughs> but for right now, it's sitting <laughs> on a Factor 8 landing page. It's info, http info.factor8.com forward slash Girls Club. It's yeah. a nasty mouthful. I know. <laughs> you can also search for, you know, hashtag Girls Club on LinkedIn and find more information. Or you can just email me directly, yeah. lb at factor8.com. Uh, but we've got uh, 75, I think, free seats uh, this year, if I can swing it. I'm trying to. Awesome. Um, working on getting more sponsors. And then we have folks who are actually paying to play as well, especially companies that want more than one seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I love this. And I love the fact, uh, as you said at the beginning, that you decided to put something concrete be behind this and say, if it you know, I want 75 people actually promoted as opposed to 74 or 75 more coffee table discussions about what you know what's wrong right <laughs> yeah let's do it and let, yeah. i really think it's gonna work and people are getting behind it and it's an exciting program so 30 second beef it's it's nine months long mm -hmm. it's virtual training on sales management it's mentorship some awesome thought leaders and at the end a two-day live event where everybody comes together so i hope at that event we're starting to already applaud the women we've seen promoted through the program yeah, that's fantastic. And as I said, I mean, I've been fortunate in the past, actually, have had the pleasure of working with some great uh, uh, women sales VPs. Um, so I think the more the more we can get in there, the better. Uh, we need to mix it up, right? I think we do need to mix it up. I, it's uh, The women I've learned from over the last year or two in the Women Sales Pros have just drastically changed my life and my business. And mm. now it's like, how did I go till I was 44 without having female role models? Mm. How did that even happen? And I don't want it to happen to anybody else because I shot up like a cannon mm -hmm. when I started to meet ladies like Trish Bertuzzi and Jill Conrath and right. Barb Giamanco who helped me mm -hmm. and like reached across and said, oh, here you go. Right. Versus women when I grew up who were just, let's compete with each other and be catty and awful and backstab. <laughs> and it's just crap. Men don't do that. Why do we do that? Yeah. Well, men do it differently. I wouldn't say men don't do it. <laughs> do, okay. All right. That's good to know. But that's another discussion for another Different day. One. All, right, yeah. good. All right. Listen, thanks again. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM, Lauren Bailey. Always a pleasure. Uh, check pleasure. out Girls Club. And, uh, you know, if you're a woman out there and you want to progress your career in sales, you know, look it up get involved and be one of those 75 who gets promoted awesome thank you so much john you're welcome so i encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net the online sales magazine also subscribe to our youtube channel and then comment get involved in the conversation love to hear what you have to say